Well, good morning, Evangel Church. We are going to start the week by reading from a book by J.C. Philpott called Through Baca's Veil. And I've read from this a few times. Uh, we'll pick back up with Tim Keller's book uh, after this. But I was just really moved by this devotion, and especially after looking at Philippians chapter 2, uh, speaking of the mind of Christ uh, yesterday, uh, this just seemed appropriate. I won't share much afterwards because it's, it's fairly long, um, but I pray that God would bless you through it and move you uh, to hear from him and to see him more clearly. Romans chapter 8 verse 6 says this, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. One of the most blessed marks of regenerating grace and the sure fruit of the love of God shed abroad in the hearts is that spiritual mindedness of which Paul declares it is life and peace. To be spiritually minded, to live and walk under the blessed power and influence of the Holy Spirit, to have the heart and affections drawn up from this poor vain scene to where Jesus sits at the right hand of God, this is life. The life of God in the soul with all its present blessedness and all its future glory. And peace, for peace and rest are alone to be found in this path of union and communion with a glorified Redeemer. In this sweet spirituality of mind, in these heavenly affections, and in this intercourse with the Lord at his own throne of grace, the life and power of godliness must consist. We trust we know from what we have felt in our own bosom what this sweet spiritual mindedness is and what are its blessed effects. It is a key to unlock the scriptures, for then we read them under the same sacred influence and by the same divine teaching by which they were written. It is a door of prayer. For under these calm and peaceful emotions, the soul, as if instinctively and necessarily, seeks holy communion with God. It is the fruitful parent of sweet meditation. For the truth of God is then thought over, fed upon, and is found to be bred from heaven. It is the secret of all life and power in preaching. For unless the heart be engaged in and melted and softened by the truth delivered, there will be a hardness in it, in its delivery, which will make itself sensibly felt by the living here. And it is the power of all spiritual conversation. For how can we talk with any unction or profit unless we are spiritually minded? And in that frame of soul, wherein the things of God are our chief element, the language of our lips, because the delight of our soul. But to be otherwise, to be carnally minded on our knees, with the Bible open before our eyes, in the house of prayer, at the Lord's table, in the company of the family of God. What a burden to our spirit. What a condemnation to our conscience. What a parent of doubt and fear, whether matters can be right between God and our soul. When there is such a distance between him and us. It is true that the most eminent saints and servants of God have their dead and dark seasons when the life of God seems sunk to so low an ebb as to be hardly visible, so hidden is the stream by the mud banks of their fallen nature. But still it glides onward, round them, if not through them. And sometimes a beam of light falls upon it from above as it threads its way toward the ocean of eternal love, which manifests not only its existence but its course and that gives back to heaven the ray it receives from heaven. Nay, by these very dark and dead seasons, the saints and servants of God are instructed. They see and feel what the flesh really is, how alienated from the life of God. They learn in whom their strength and sufficiency lie. They are taught in that in them, that is, in their flesh, dwelleth no good thing, that no exertions of their own can maintain in strength and vigor the life of God, and that all they are and have, all they believe, know, feel, and enjoy with all their ability, usefulness, gifts, and grace, it all flows from the pure, sovereign grace, the rich, free, undeserved, yet unceasing goodness and mercy of God. 
they learn in the hard school of painful experience their emptiness and nothingness, and that without Christ, indeed, they can do nothing. And thus they become clothed with humility, that comely and becoming garb. They cease from their own strength and wisdom and learn experimentally that Christ is and ever must be all in all to them and all in all in them. I don't know where the Lord finds you today, whether you are in a season of brightness and, and, and joy and, and ease or whether you're in that dark season of trial. But child of God, know that in that dark season of trial, he is seeking to reveal himself all the more clearly to you. He shows us that we have nothing in ourselves, that he is all our sufficiency. We have no strength. He is our strength. We have no wisdom. He is our wisdom. We have no light. He is our light. And so if you're struggling today, in your struggle, live with expectancy that he is the satisfaction of your soul. And in this season, you are learning experimentally who God is. And he will change you by that. To behold him as in the mirror, the glory of the Lord, we're changed from glory to glory into the same image. But sometimes those seasons are hard. And so I pray that God would give you the grace today to be aware of his presence and to move in your life and to teach you more nearly, more clearly, how much he loves you. Well, I pray that you have a good week. And as always, don't ever forget, we love you and we miss you.